I was reading an article that said three positives for the new look Mavericks, and that's all fine and well. But I, what I really wanted to talk about was how many of these things do you think are really sustainable in the back half of the regular season? For example, number one is not sustainable to me, and I don't think it's debatable, but I want to see how well you guys think that they could do with this. All right. In the six-game win streak, the Mavericks are second in the league in net rating. So in terms of how much better is your offensive rating than your defensive rating? Their offensive rating is sixth in the league. Their defensive rating is first in the league. I'm not saying... Since the trade? In the last six games. Okay, so that gotcha, encapsulates okay. three games before the okay. trade. But actually, yes, since the trade as well. And I'm, I'm not saying they can't be a good defensive team, but I do feel like it is unreasonable to expect them to finish out the second half of the season with having legitimately the best defensive team in the NBA. I think it is as long as we can play San Antonio, Washington, New York with four of their five starters out, Brooklyn, who was sitting out their players to trade them possibly, and Philadelphia, who did not have Joel Embiid. So if we can get that schedule for most of the rest of the season, we can be the best. <laughs> what? Hell yeah! What, what? Hey, they took advantage of the situation. Uh, I will. Well, let's ask this then. Let's kind of turn this corner. What uh, what ranking do you think is a good area that you think they can finish at? Top eight, and they need to be to be. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm still I'm still keeping myself away from the contender word. Like if they get in the playoffs, they are in contention. Real okay. contenders are different things, but but if they want to be really good in the playoffs, where does their defensive rating need to be? I think it needs to be top eight, and we're gonna get to another point in a minute that has to happen for that to be the case. But I think top eight is possible. I think I'm, it's because I was gonna say top ten, so I'm okay. right there with okay. you. Okay, and you said. Possible. I think that's possible. Okay. Continue. They have they have better defensive players for one. Yeah, and they are right now very willing to give that effort on that end. And to your point, the West is wide open, but yet you're not going to have an easy first round matchup for sure. So you may well play. You'll Denver probably the be the round. underdog yeah. in the first round, but not a, if, if it's Denver, you'll be a major underdog. Yes. If it's anybody else. You'll be in a slight underdog. And I will say, I think offensive rating is very achievable. Sixth, I, I absolutely. If you tell me this is one of the six best offensive teams in the NBA, cosign, I could see that. All right. Can the new guys keep up their pace? And I wanted to focus in specifically like on PJ Washington. Something of note about PJ Washington. In his first three games as a Maverick, he's had up and down offensive production. I feel like we would agree on that. However... The Mavericks are a plus 17 in his first three games, and that's in large part because of his defense. Obviously, a lot of people talked about the defensive work on Wemby, and we can get into Gafford in just a second. Do you think, let's say, the defense of Washington and the rebounding of Gafford are sustainable? Yes. Uh, although I do feel like Gafford's rebounding has been... I'm not saying he's got to get 17. That well, he has, he's, awesome. he's averaging 12. Okay, I think he can So do I think 10. that's the... the If you were going to put a number on it, can he average 12 rebounds a game? And I would say, I think so, but I would say closer to 10. Yeah, yeah. I think And that digits. would be good. That's yeah. He averaged 8 this year for Washington, so can he up it to 10? That's 10 I less times so. Luka has to jump. That's a good well, point. He doesn't. He doesn't. Well, he like <laughs> ten less times Luke has to wait for the ball to land in his sometimes. hands. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like, I think that is sustainable. PJ Washington, um, we discussed that pretty a lot yesterday about right. like he's physical. He has you can't just put your shoulder in his chest and, and go by him or through him. He has a little more of that to it. I think he can only get better from where he is right now. Defensively, I think he can sustain what he's doing. He's playing good defense. Yeah. He, I think he, he needs to better. be better offensively, but I don't know if that's part of your question yet or Let not. Let me ask you this, though. Let's say the deal has to be made the way I've constructed it. He will remain this hit or miss offensively, but defensively, he will stay top-notch. Would you not prefer that over a mediocre defensive player who's clicking offensively for this you're team. asking me i want neither so you're i'm, I'm answering your question by sure. saying we're not the mavericks aren't good enough unless 
he turns into a better, better offense. Yeah. It's only three games. So I'm going off of these three. He's averaging 8.7 points. He has to average over 12 points a game for you. Okay. On, mm-hmm. I'll take a step back and say he needs to be shooting 45% from the field. Well, he's going to get enough shots, and it will be yeah. it, if he's averaging 45% from the field, he will average over 12 points. Absolutely. Because that's not a big number. No, I'm, but I'm what I'm out. worried about is he'll get to 12 points on consistently like 11 shots. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I, but I, I get I, I get where we call that the Antoine Walkering it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, I scored 20. You took 20 shots. Yeah. Don't be so proud of that. And then the last one, and this one is going to be the most important one. Can the Dallas Mavericks sustain their health right now? Because I realize, like, you still had an issue with Exum, but we talked about it. Kleba missed the first half of the season. Derek Lively just came back. Kyrie has been out. Partially, I know one of those injuries was because of his own teammate, but you've seen this team miss players again and again and again. And now this feels like the closest they've been to a healthy team. So they have to or they'll lose. I think a lot of the playoff matchups in the Western Conference first round will be based off of health. I mean, I'm not saying you hope for this because then Christian McCaffrey's mom will throw a fit or whatever. But, I mean, it would be beneficial if you match up with the Clippers and they're dealing with Paul George being out and James Harden having an issue, right? Okay, just like if they're playing the Mavericks, if that's the matchup and they're like, guess what? Kyrie's a question mark and... Uh, Derek Lively Jr. is a question mark. They, or even Maxi Kleba, in a way. You can get by with Maxi being out, but you want your team completely healthy. And so when I look at these matchups, even Denver. Denver deals with a lot of injuries. Michael yes. Porter Jr. is not usually a healthy guy. Uh, Murray's not usually yeah, a healthy guy. That, yeah. So like you could face Denver and go, this is awesome. We're not facing the championship Denver Nuggets. They have two injuries they're dealing with. In fact, I know I go back to times where most people weren't alive. 1988, the Mavericks made the Western Conference Finals for the first time ever in their history. One of the major reasons they did that was because Denver was hurt. Denver didn't have their... They had a better record. They were the two seed. The Mavs were the three seed. But they got to play a team that wasn't healthy come playoff time. And the Mavs took advantage of it and then pushed the Lakers to seven games. Health is going to mean so much, not only to the Mavs, but to all the teams in the Western Conference. Yeah, I don't know. I I got lots of fears about the health of this thing. And I, I don't know the health history of PJ or Gafford either. So I don't know how that mixes in with it. But, uh, I mean, Kyrie missing from the team, big scare. That's my biggest scare is that we can't make a run because something happens to him. And the other person is, because I just want to take these two breakout uh, scenarios, is Luka and Kyrie have played together 28 of the team's 55 games. So almost exactly half. When they do play together, 18 and 10. Derek Lively has played in only 37 games. When he does play, the Mavericks are 23 and 14. Now, I realize some of this is matchup dependent and everything like that, but it's not a hard conclusion to draw that this is a quality basketball team when Lively's there or when Luka and Kyrie are together. And if you get that down the stretch, I really do think you can see your push to the five seed. And right now, recently, a guy who gets hurt all the time when he gets to play is Josh Green. Yep. Josh Green, in this month of February, and it looks like seven game is averaging 13.4 points on 48.8% shooting from the three-point line. I'm not even talking about from the field Which is there. crazy. Right. And he's averaging almost three assists and four and a half rebounds. That's who we have to have. And he has to be healthy to do this because he's only played in, I think, 40 or 42 games this year. I had to click on game log over there, but I think he's in at 42 games this year. So health from, yes, Kyrie number one, well, Luka number one, Kyrie number two, but all these role players need to be healthy to come playoff time and that they've gelled over these last 20 plus games. Is your, is y'all's goal then, and we can talk about this more next week, I'm sure. Is your goal number five seed that you think is achievable? Or do you look at the gap and say, hey, it's only four games. It's only five games. We can make a run at three, four. Right now, you know, the attainable goal is six, five in that range. Like, that's the attainable one. I would rather not be a seven, eight seed. So you don't have to play in the... Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I would rather, I would prefer to be in that range. But then once I get there... 
now let's reset. Now let's go, hey, can we do we can we make a push here at the end of the year to get this? Are other teams gonna start resting players where we can make something really good happen and peak? You know, we always say peak at the right time. Sure. And it, uh, at the end of the season here, get on a roll and have some confidence and, and something established. Five through tens jumbled up. You can if you win uh next Thursday against the Phoenix Suns, you're the five seed, yeah. possibly. Yeah. If you know, because you beat them, they're a game up on you, and the Pelicans are a game up on you. The issue is the Nuggets are the four seed right now. <clears throat> they only have 19 losses. You have 23. So in in 25 to 30 games for all these teams left, you have to make up four to five games on the defending champs. That gets very Stuff. difficult to do. So I look at five and six. You want to be in the real playoffs. And then you just hope that the matchup is favorable in that first round. And when you say favorable, I'm assuming OKC or Minnes or OKC yeah. or the Clippers, but you would take Minnesota all ahead of Denver. Yes, Denver is the one if they're completely healthy. I just don't think you can beat. Sure. But maybe I'm wrong about that. I hope I'm wrong about that. The other thing, too, is if Phoenix were to jump up there, I don't mind taking on Phoenix. They're a very good team. They could beat us very easily. But I've seen Devin Chickenhead Booker play in the playoffs against us, and he wilts away. So I just look at this and go, all right, the Clippers, you've taken them to seven games two different times with a, a younger Luka and a worse team than what Luka has right now. And then I've seen Kawhi beat us and then go, I can't play anymore. Season's over. So, yeah. like, maybe you get the Clippers in the second round. If you get a favorable matchup in the first round, then Kawhi's like, dude, I had to play six games in a row. My body's done.